Hey everybody, let's take a look at Free For All in Titanfall 2. Uh, the two matches that I got to play, we're going to be playing both of them in full for you guys. I'll be talking over one of them, giving my personal thoughts and analysis. And then the second one, I will play completely silent. You can just enjoy the raw gameplay. Let's go ahead and get started. From the get-go, our goal is to control a corner of the map. If I prevent enemy spawns from that area and focus more on staying alive than anything else, I'm accomplishing two major things. First, if I'm one less player on the map is dying regularly, the overall score of the match is going to be a little bit lower. If I'm engaging less, I'm going to have a better idea of where the rest of the players are spawning and how I can catch them out of position. Second, I'm allowing my passive Titan Timer to earn me progress towards my Titan, where I want to spend the majority of my time this game. Realistically, it doesn't matter that I start this off pretty much well behind, because once I'm able to get into my Titan, I can take control of the match much more easily. At least, that's my intention. You'll also notice that I'm running Dice Roll as my boost, so if you're not already familiar with this one, this boost is acquired at exactly 36% of your Titan Timer being filled. Strange number I know, but that's the one they went with. Upon acquiring this boost, you're going to be awarded any random boost that's available to pilots. So, as the name suggests, this is a gambling boost where you're taking the risk of getting a cheap boost late in order to potentially get an expensive boost nice and early. My reasoning here was that of all the cheap boosts, they're not things that I want to be plopping down the exact moment I get them. So, if I get an unlucky roll and get a weak boost, I don't really care about it because I can still get value from that boost at some later point during the game. I, I, I don't care that, you know, if it's a 20% boost and I get it at 36% instead, like, I, I, it doesn't it doesn't matter, right? It's not a big deal. So, in the event that I strike big and I hit one of the six really big boosts, then I'm in business, man. I'm ahead. I'm winning. So, I'll speak in more detail about my opinion on dice roll later, probably in another video entirely, but... Let's focus on the match at hand right now. So, we get amped weapons early, and there's an enemy titan that's dropped on the map. At this point, I know pilots are going to be flocking towards that enemy titan to take it down, or to blindside pilots who are trying to, you know, knock that titan down. So, I'm trying to counter the counter. Stay back, pick off pilots that are trying to kill the anti titan pilots, which I hope that sentence makes sense. Just think about it if you need to. And, uh, just try not to die, right? Just get those kills, pick people off, work on my titan timer. Be passive, just passive, passive, passive. It's okay to be behind at this stage in the game, because I can come back. I can make it all work later on. For my Titan, I do decide to pull out Ion. So the reasoning here is that I figure most Titan drops are going to be very staggered in this mode. So there's going to be heaps of pilots that are on the ground, just running around and waiting for me to pick them off with the laser shot. My other really good hit scan option in terms of Titans is Legion, but he's just a little too immobile for my liking to fend off so many potential enemy targets. If I had a team behind me, of course Legion is fantastic, but solo? I don't know that it's going to be my first pick. Uh, looking back though, I could definitely imagine some really epic moments where my smart core is ready and I've just got waves upon waves of pilots jumping off roofs trying to shoot me with mag launchers, charge rifles, whatever, and I'm just automatically locking on each and every one of them and knocking them out of the sky. And it sounds like it's going to be really fun, because I'm sure that's going to happen to a lot of people, so Legion might still be worth playing, just for the fun factor, if nothing else. Um, I can also see a decently strong case for Ronin, since the lead wall is pretty disgustingly good at killing pilots, so four dashes with one of them offering temporary invincibility and a core ability that also allows you to cover the map more quickly seems like it'd be solid enough. I mean, the lead wall is just insane at killing pilots, so... That is reason enough for me, but I would stay away from Scorch and North Star in this mode just as a rule. They're not really going to be great enough at what you're trying to accomplish in this mode, but Tone actually should be pretty solid as long as you've got good enough aim to score direct hits on fast pilots with your 40 mil. That sonar pulse ability of hers is going to help dramatically in keeping you one step ahead of all the other players in the match. Let's get back to Ion here though. I'll be spawning directly into her very shortly. Besides Laser Shot being perfect, as I've already stated, her other abilities all work fantastically well for a lone Titan that's just trying to survive and pick up kills whenever they can. Vortex Shield is, well, Vortex Shield, so it's effectively an extra health meter that helps you mitigate punishment for bad positioning. Tripwire will let you cover your own back, slowing down anyone that tries to push your position. I'd probably recommend taking any kit for Ion other than Entangled Energy here, since you're really just trying to be as survivable as you possibly can. You don't need max DPS with your laser shot, which is what Entangled Energy is for. You just need to be able to disengage and keep your Titan alive, so 
getting a free um, the free tripwires or cheaper vortex shield or even a longer lasting laser core are all more beneficial in this mode in my view. Again, we're going to go back to my positioning, and I really hope this matches up with the video. Uh, I'm going to be right back where I started in the game. When I, when I first spawned in the Ion, I'm back where I started the game initially. I'm back in that corner of the map. I know that nobody can spawn behind me. Nobody's in their right mind is going to push me from that left lane. They're never going to come through there. It's like the farthest away corner of the whole map. And there's only two other lanes that they could potentially push me from, which both fork together through a choke point into where I'm standing. So... It's a really powerful position for me. I find it very safe to just slowly push out from that location, sticking to the outskirts, as I rejigger myself after I did actually die a couple of times. So, basically the goal is to stick to the outside of the map, pick off people with laser shot as much as I possibly can, and generally the idea is that it only takes a few pilot kills and a few laser shots on Titans to get that laser core ready again. So, that'll be my prime method of shooting Titans so that'll be my prime method of shooing titans away from me when they decide to actually push me and try to kill me. Check out the clip of me getting blindsided from behind by an enemy ion, I think it was an ion, and being able to immediately turn on that titan, dash into it, and blow my laser core right in their face. Just annihilate them before they can do significant damage to me. There's a good lesson there in that sometimes with there being no regenerating shields in titanfall 2, your best defense might just be to go all out on offense and hope for the best. We're getting pretty close to the end here, so just a couple more remarks before we finish out the first match. If you stick to the outskirts with Ion and you use your trip wires intelligently, rodeos are not going to be a very common occurrence for you, especially not in this game mode. So use your electric smoke aggressively to discourage enemy titans from pushing you, or release it on top of an enemy titan that's just dropped onto the battlefield. Those Titanfall 1 tricks do still work, and just as well as they did before, so with how fast you're able to charge your titan core in this game, especially on Ion, you can pretty much guarantee that a fresh titan that drops out of position while you have electric smoke ready is gonna subsequently get laser cored like right off the bat. So you're killing pretty much any titan with that combo as long as you hit like the majority of your laser core. So just don't drop on an enemy Ion, just like dropping on a Scorch. You don't want to drop on a Scorch because you're going to lose your Titan instantly. In summary, Ion is a beast in this game mode, and she served me exceptionally well. So I'm going to cut the voiceover off here. That's enough of me for one video. So thank you for watching. Uh, enjoy the second match in its full glory without me ruining it for you with my terrible voiceover. And I will see you Sunday in the next video. Head on over to my Twitter where I've got a poll asking what kind of video you want me to put together. Uh, it's not too late, so just go ahead, hop on over there, let your voice be heard. Pick out what you want to see for Sunday. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care. Free for all, kid. Take them all out. Great first kill. I'll celebrate for you. Titan is standing by.
Call it when ready. They're winning. We need to step this up. Let's do this. It's good you returned safely, pilot. Yeah, just like that. Go nuts out there. Killer 
Chief. 